I want to start off with the famous lines from Alexander Pope's um, essay, To Err is Human, To Forgive is Divine. Last week in my sermon, as was pointed out in the email, I joined together both uh, Jehoshaphat and Hezekiah in an illustration and didn't make them clearly set apart from one another. And I apologize for you for bringing those together. Now I, I ask for the divine and ask for, for your forgiveness. I know that this has been a very busy week. It has been an upsetting week for many. I uh, had a text message that was sent to me earlier. And the question was is if the Supreme Court voted with what they did and what was announced this week, would I do gay marriages? Folks, the great problem that we have is that something which is an action which is spoken about in the scriptures we made in our day. An action is not something that we should be identified with, but an action is something that we do. All of us here can be identified as sinners. But our true identity should be that once we understand what Jesus Christ has done for us, that because of his death, My identity is a son of God. Your identity is that you are sons and daughters of God. And let us, let us never get caught up with making our actions our identity, but let our identity direct our actions. And so I will tell you today that based upon the word of God, my actions can only be those of one who identifies with Jesus Christ. And I cannot perform a homosexual wedding. I do not, hold on, I want to finish this. I do not hate homosexuals. Because homosexuality is a sin, just like my actions that I do and the mistakes I make are sins. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And in this church, I believe that we need to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. And may our actions be that way. And I believe that that's what we have been called to in this day and age. Because folks, I believe it's only going to get worse. I believe the darkness of this nation, we are moving away from our Christian principles, from the fact that we believe that we are sons and daughters of the King. And we think that we can get away and then by you shouldn't have been surprised by what the Supreme Court did. They were only doing what other justices had done, what that had been forced upon us. All votes, all ideas have been set aside. Now we're being told what to do, as one person said yesterday, by nine lawyers are ruling over us. But I am still a child of the king. And I will do what the king wants me to do. He gives us these words. I'd like you to turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter. I don't know if they can get a hold of my hand. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And we want to pick up on verses 44, 45, and 46. It says there, therefore you also be ready. 
For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. You then, as faithful and wise servants, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season, blessed is the servant whom the master when he comes will find so doing. Because you and I are identified with Jesus Christ, because he is our Lord and Master, there are certain actions that are expected of us. And because of our, our identity with Jesus, I believe that what he has called us to is he's called us to a set of actions that we need to live in this day and age. We should not get caught up in what is going on. We should not be discouraged by the evil that is happening around us. We should not give up what is... Folks, to even get dwell on these things is not worthwhile. We need to dwell on other things. Because we need to be prepared for our Lord to come again. Amen? Amen. So this is what we need to do. It's based upon the parables that follow after this. And I'm going to share with you some scripture text to give you some idea of what we should be like. I'd like to start off with 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and that life is in his Son. And he who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I believe that one of the things that we need to do is we need to come to the point where everything we do, everything we are, everything we say, every action, everything about us should be centered around Jesus Christ. I believe we have become lackluster and we say the right words, but the question that I ask you, do you know Jesus Christ intimately as your Lord and Master? That means that what you have to do is you have to spend the time. The reason why we are Seventh-day Adventists is because we believe in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. It is a sign that we are in relationship with the Master of the universe. It is a belief that we trust that God has created us, that God knows what he wants for us to be. We need to know Jesus Christ. But here's the problem. We are all human. We need help. That's why I've included up there John 14 verses 25 and 26. It says there that the, the Father has given the gift of the Holy Spirit to help and teach us so that we will know what God expects of us. Amen. Amen? You see, here's the problem, folks. I can't even find Jesus Christ on my own. I need help. It is a sad thing sometimes when we set ourselves up and we think we know all things and we have forgotten along the way that what we need to do is we need to seek Jesus Christ through the His Holy Spirit to know the right things. Young people, pray that the Holy Spirit will be in your life and help guide you and direct you. In this day and age, this world needs to see that you stand for Jesus Christ because you know him as your Lord and Master through the help of the Holy Spirit. Church members, we must, as good and faithful servants, make sure that we are ready. Have we forgotten what we are involved with? 
I want to remind you about the parable that follows. By the way, each one of these parables, the ten virgins, all of them are relating to good and faithful servants and those who aren't. This is what it says on BibleSearch.org. Notice that all the virgins began their way with full lamps, which seemed to indicate that they all had anticipated that they were going to have to what? Wait. Moreover, the wise anticipated that, the, that they might have to wait far into the night before the bride groom comes. I want you to notice something. That those servants of God in the last days, we need to realize before the bridegroom comes, what is it going to be like? It's going to be dark, folks. We should not be surprised what the you know, there are many people talking about the horrible things that the justices did and what they voted on. Folks, you should not be surprised. We're going to see more darkness. We're called to have our lights trimmed and burning. We're called to have the power of the Holy Spirit. We are called to be prepared for darkness, for night. We need to be ready. If we are faithful servants, we need to make sure that if at all possible, we will do everything possible in order to have the Holy Spirit power. I am finding out all along the way that the thing that I need to do in that life going on so many times is the, the devil is trying to force my attention upon myself. Have you felt that way? It's all about me. Folks, I have to learn by the Holy Spirit power. It is not about me. It is about Jesus Christ and by His power and by His glory, I will keep my focus upon Jesus Christ and not myself. That is what denotes us as His servants. Are you His servants? Are you keeping your attention directed to Jesus Christ? The devil wants to get us all caught up in the darkness instead of having our lights trimmed and burning. Amen? Amen? Folks, if we are going to be ready for Jesus Christ to come again, we need to have a deep reservoir full of God's Holy Spirit working in us if we are going to be successful. I am a sinful human being saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And as that, I am keeping my emphasis on Jesus Christ and asking that his Holy Spirit will guide and direct me. What about you? The next parable is the one about the task. In uh, my life, I called it the parable of money bags. And it sort of reminded me of this Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13 and 14. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill can not be hidden. We are called to take what God has given us and we are called to be salt. You know what salt is good for? The first thing we all think of is, do you know that almost every recipe has just a touch of salt in it at least? Even dessert has a has salt in it, did you know that? Salt has a way of, of making everything that it gets in 
involved with them better. You know, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be going to Austin. We're heading there. The ministers of the North American Division are all meeting together in Austin. And I'm looking forward to having some textbooks. <laughs> and you cannot enjoy textbooks with a little bit of salt in it. Hate to tell you that. We are called to be salt folks because we are the ones that make this world better by being in it. I want to make it clear again. We do not hate those who practice homosexuality. It is no different than those of you who get onto the internet and search out porn. It is no different than those of you who tell lies. It is no different from the sin of pride. By the way, folks, those sins and those sinners are sitting here in our church today. We have gotten along the way, and we think that if we will keep homosexuals out, but I'm going to give you the statistics. They say homosexuals make up 1% of the total population. We have over 500 members. That means by statistics that there are at least five of you who have practiced at some time or some ways homosexuality. Don't go looking around for those folks because it's just like trying to it's just like trying to weed out those who have a haughty spirit. Where do we get haughty enough? Or where do we start getting rid of those people? Think about it. See, we we have been led and, 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 and guided by our society to think that an action is an identity. And we need to understand as sinners, what does the Bible promise? We should be giving this wonderful salt and spreading throughout the thing. There is no sin God cannot forgive. And then he says, you are what? New creatures. Young people, if you get into a habit, do not give up to that habit. God can help you to change it around. With his help, there is no sin that God cannot handle and change. It is not the issue of sin. Folks, if we go and say that a homosexual does it because, oh, that's the way it was because they were born that way. Well, you know what? How many people were born to be alcoholics? How many people were born to take the weed in their mouth? How many people were born to do so? Don't take birth as an excuse. I was born a sinner, but I am saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. We need to solve this world that God can change us. We need to be the light in the darkness. That means that we have to invest our influence. That's where the idea of the money bags comes from, the talents. We are in this world, and God tells us that we need to invest our influence invest what we have, invest what God has given us, and win people to Jesus Christ. You know what? Not a single one of you here can make anyone else better, but we can all bring people to Jesus Christ. We can. We can. I have no hope. Jesus Christ. I know somewhere along the way, during the next few weeks when they are in general conference, what song are they going to be singing? We have this hope that burns inside our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Folks, do we still have that hope? Can Jesus come through? I believe it. We need to give the salt and the light. We need to invest what we have. You know what the problem is sometimes? We think, ooh, in the church we got all this purity. <laughs> if I make mistakes,
mistakes, how many of the rest of you make mistakes? I'm so glad that I am saved by Jesus Christ. And that's the message we need to give to the world. We are no better than anyone else. It's just that we have something to share, that we can give people encouragement that there is something beyond us. There is a master who died so that we can be free from sin. That's the salt and the light that we have to share with this world. We need to make investments in the world because what's the sign of the good servant? Anyone who invested what happened, they brought back more when they invested than what they put out. Parents, is there a single one of us that do not want the children with us when we go and meet Jesus when he comes again? Not one. How many other children worth the investments so that we can win people and we can bring them to Jesus. We are called to be salt and light. We are called to make the investment. But you know the sad thing is how many of us want to hide what God has given us. And the son of the unfaithful servant is the one who hid everything he had under the bush. we can love sinners and bring them to Jesus. Think about how we will change this world. We never will win this world by telling people that they are wrong, that they are sinful. We will only win them if they can see that Jesus saved. Mark, chapter 9. Verses 36 and 37. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of the when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. I had made a promise. pastor was sitting on the ground blowing bubbles at BBS with the kindergartners. And I got so tickled when the mother came and she said, my daughter said, the pastor's blowing bubbles with me. <laughs> and if you weren't there in, in the kindergarten group, I, I'm sorry if you want to blow bubbles out it is worth the investment. Mm -hmm. Children, young people, I don't want you ever to think that you are the least. I want to tell you that in this church we value our youth. Mm -hmm. Part of being a good servant is learning 
how to treat people. I'm still practicing that. I'm not perfect at it. The Lord has made me a certain way. And in my sinfulness, that means there are certain areas I don't do well in. That's why I need your help to help me to make a perfect picture. You see, it is only how we treat those that we think less of. Folks, there is each one of you have someone that you think the less of. There are many times that I have been approached by people who are going through hard times and they ask for help. I try to as much as possible to help. It is only by how we help one another, how we work with one another. But we've got the wrong idea, and I've said it again and I'll say it now. If we think that we are the only ones that are worthwhile before God, shame on us. The kingdom of God is not just in this church. Jesus says that he has sheep and other folds. And I think that there are some times that we need to understand that there are people that are outside of these walls that need to hear the good news that God cares for them. And it is only by how nice we are and how we act. It is by sharing smiles. It is by going out there. I tried it this week. I had to go. My son got a whole two dollars back from his taxes with the state of North Carolina. <laughs> and he told me to go into the bank to cash it. <laughs> you know how silly you look with the check for two bucks? So I go in there, I, could, I, I only could do the thing that I could think to do. Before I got to the cellar, I got a big smile on my face. Hey, Miss Angie, how are you doing today? I got this big old check I want you to take care of. She took one look at it, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but it opened up, we had a conversation to talk with one another, we share, and it was not just a business transaction. We could encourage one another along the way. Yeah. Folks, we're, the difference between the sheep and the goat, and sheep, I guess, are considered to be the good ones because how did they treat people? How many of you like going into prisons? I don't. But I've gone into prisons in order to meet people. Why? Because there are people even in prison who need to be encouraged for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. There's a reason why I go downstairs a lot of times to check on each of the Sabbath school rooms. I'm not eyeballing the teachers down there to make sure that they're teaching doctrine straight. I want to do everything possible to make sure that your children know that your pastor is open to listen to what is going on. And I want them to be baptized members of this church. Amen. 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 It's worth spending the time going down there. Folks, you see, on the other hand, what the persons that were called the goats that were told that they were to get out of their Lord's presence. Why were they told to go? They were told to go based upon how they treated the least. This is what we need to do, folks. We need to go around this whole community finding those that we think that are the least and helping them out and in that presence. Thank you, students from Mount Pisgah, for going and visiting Ms. Rosa. 
By the way, was she infectious? You know, Miss Rosa comes into this church. She's in a wheelchair. When I first came here, she had her one good leg in the cast. You know, she doesn't have the other leg. And I do not know a person who's going through all those troubles that is more infectious with her smile and her encouragement than Miss Rosa. So I want to thank you guys for going over there. I bet you were more uplifted than you thought you were. You thought you were going to do the uplifting. We need to do more of that in this church. Take the time, folks. Encourage one another. Give smiles. Help one another. You see, my problem, and I, and I know this, I get easily distracted. When I'm standing at the door, you, you, uh, <laughs> you expect me, you give me your names, you expect me to keep them. I'm going to tell you I have a problem with that. And the next person's coming for my attention, and you still wanted to tell me more, and my attention goes elsewhere. And I'm sorry, folks. I'm that type of person. It's always going on his attention is being drawn elsewhere. When the Lord comes, though, I will be perfect. Until then, I'm still a child of God. A sinner saved by grace. Are we sheep? from Christ Object Lessons, page 319. And she writes there, There will be no future probation in which to prepare for eternity. It is this life that we are to put on the road of Christ righteousness. This is our only opportunity to form character for the home which Christ has made ready for those who obey his commandments. If we are going to be true and faithful servants, we are called to three things. Folks, you must know Jesus Christ better than you know anyone else in this world. And he sent the Holy Spirit to we are moving into the night. It is dark outside. We must have divine power in order to light up this world. We are called to share our talents, to take what we have been given. Do you believe Jesus Christ died for you? Do you believe that? Then you have a message to share with the world. You're called to go out from this building and find people and influence them for Jesus Christ. And a lot of the time, you're going to get no's. But every once in a while, you're going to get a yes. And it will be worth all the investment you put out there. Amen. And then, folks, how are you treating others? was watching Dr. Phil this week. A lady was dealing with the fact that her daughter was going through the same thing you know, she tried. She had had this problem with her weight. And so she tried to be extra healthy and to make her daughter to be healthy. And her daughter was a, having a problem of bulimia. Dr. Phil said to her, well, do you think that you had something to do with it? And she said, yes, but. Now, I'll tell you something. When someone says a positive type of thing, and then but says but, 
you're basically saying that everything that you said before you really don't believe in because of what happens after the fight that you believe in. Sarah and Justin, I am so sorry that your past your pastor dad has passed on to you his bad habits. But I put you in the hands of Jesus Christ because that's the only hope. It's no buts, folks. We either fully belong to Jesus Christ or we don't. Yes, I know the hand of God is the best thing that I can give you guys. Thank you. I am the Son. Dear Father in heaven, now is our time. We are in the time of darkness, and so I pray that as a people, we will belong to Jesus Christ. I pray for each and every precious soul that is here this morning and those who are surrounding us. I pray that we may be the light and the salt. I pray that we will invest in our community and share what you have given us through your Holy Spirit. And as sons and daughters, I pray that we will act like Jesus Christ. And if you want to be a faithful servant along with me, just join me at the end of this prayer and say with me, 